Tanche. Nes kasun Kaylin Kodiak. I'm a Métis sash weaver and herbalist from Calgary, Alberta, in Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, on Blackfoot Territory. I'm so lucky to lead uh, tourist groups, youth groups, community groups, and, um, and families along some of the beautiful terrain in Alberta to learn about the Métis plants um, and animals that have supported the Métis people since before Canada was a country. My family's been living here as part of our traditional round uh, for about 12 generations. We've been coming here to trade uh, and spend winters, and we moved here about seven generations ago into the town of Pincher Creek, where my great-grandmother made her home. We're part of the DeLorme family through Marie Rose DeLorme Smith who was a midwife and a healer in the late 1800s. She moved to Alberta to start a cattle ranch after the buffalo were gone uh, with her husband, uh, Charlie Smith, who was a trader, a fur trader. Um, and they, uh, together they became a big part of the community down there. My family is really lucky because we have a thread of connection to our Métis roots um, and that's not very common in southern Alberta. My great-great-grandma wrote, uh, she wrote about her daily life, she wrote about her childhood on the trail, and she wrote about cultural events that were happening in southern Alberta uh, when she was a young woman and a child. So through her we learned um, our family's story of the Métis Rebellion and um, the story of the ending of the buffalo hunts and how how we came here to southern Alberta and came to be um, the people that we are today. Marie Rose was one of the few female Métis authors, um, the only one that I'm aware of that wrote at that time. And um, she told her story in a series of uh, biographies in um, The Canadian Cattleman. That was really brave of her to uh, come out with her stories of being a Métis woman or a half-blood woman at that time um, when Indigenous people were seen as second-class citizens. So I think um, that was really brave of her to do that. Marie Rose writes that some of her uncles were killed during the rebellion, um, or we say the resistance with Louis Riel. Um, I think that probably was really scary for her. She was a mom with young kids at that time. And um, I just, I imagine that it was really terrifying um, when her people were basically kicked out of their land. Um, she was already living in Southern Alberta at the time, um, but she did have uncles who were killed in the resistance um, and family who were dispossessed. And uh, she decided to raise her children uh, in the white community and just kind of blend in and uh, she was Catholic so she raised us all as French Catholics uh, to the outside world. In 1885 Louis Riel led the Northwest Resistance to protect the homes and culture of the Métis people. Métis fought alongside Cree relatives led by Poundmaker and Big Bear for the right to continue the traditional nomadic hunting lifestyle. The Battle of Batash was the last great battle. It lasted for three days. The Métis were outnumbered three to one by soldiers from the new country of Canada. The final surrender resulted in the hanging of 10 men, a dispersal of the Métis people, the loss of homes for hundreds of Métis and Cree families. It was the beginning of what the Métis people call the dark times. Despite the love and leadership of the women in my family, I feel that in some ways we have still, uh, we're still seeing the effects of um, of trauma from war and racism.
I wish that I could have had more access to the language, the music, and the stories that my grandmother had growing up. Um, a lot of our culture comes through our art forms, and a lot of our beliefs, our worldview, uh, comes, you know, directly through those stories. And um, I think we've lost a great part of that. And for some Métis, that's led to a real feeling of, um, of loss and feeling um, not a part of something bigger. Métis families have matriarchs. Um, usually we have a strong female leaders. Uh, women decided a lot of things in Métis culture. Um, they decided marriages. Uh, women often controlled the money in the family um, and they did the planning for food, gathering and harvesting and whatnot. Um, so uh, my grandmothers and aunts were always strong leaders and I always really admired that about them. Um, I hope that I'm that kind of a matriarch for my community one day. I remember my grandma telling me, like, here, read this book. Um, my, her sister had written it. My great aunt had written this book all about my, my grandma, Marie Rose. Um, and as a kid, I wasn't interested in a book on history. Um, I didn't read it until I was a lot older. Uh, in my 20s, I finally did read it. And I was, um, I was really fascinated and kind of floored because I didn't realize what it meant to be Métis and that book sort of opened my eyes and opened a world for me that I could connect with and it meant something to me, um, kind of spoke to my heart. So um, I went in search of the Métis community in Calgary where I had moved as a young adult and and they were really supportive and wonderful and um, accepting and um, they were really happy for me to bring my herb knowledge um, and I got to teach it there and share it with them. And I, I loved that they wanted to reconnect with that. And so in return, I learned more about herbs through my culture um, because my training mostly came from a European perspective. Um, and so it's been now my goal for the last few years to learn everything I can about herbs from a Métis perspective. Our, the language we use for herbs, the way that we describe pathologies, uh, the the midshift words for the plants, um, and I love it. <laughs>It took me a while to process what being part of a community meant to me. But now that I'm here, I don't ever want to go back. Um, being part of a culture just brings deeper meaning to my life. So at Kodiak Herbal, we offer reconnecting experiences for adults, uh, youth, families. Um, and you don't have to be Métis to come to our events. If you're interested in Métis culture, want to learn a little bit more about Indigenous life um, and history, um, a little bit more about our arts and crafts. As long as you come respectfully, we're happy to have you. During the pandemic, we moved some of our offerings online. And often nine to 12 long. We have groups in BC and Manitoba who are learning uh, Métis traditional skills through Kodiak Herbal. And that like makes me really proud. I'm really happy about that. Yeah, it's so nice to connect with communities across the country. Once in a while, I get to travel out there to see them and, um, you know, do a plant walk in the local area. Um, it's really fun. I just absorb plant facts really quickly and I love to share them with other people. And I'm passionate about getting them excited about uh, all the wonderful ways that plants support us. In Métis culture, everything has a spirit. So the plants and the animals and the landscape, the water, um, all has a spirit. Um, and when we get a gift from them, we give something back. And that keeps balance. All of creation is my relations and we're all related and we take care of each other like a family would. Um, we are so connected 
to the plants and animals in the landscape of Canada. Uh, we don't even realize it. To this day, we rely on them. And they rely on us as, as well. So we have to take that responsibility of our place in the web of life and, um, and protect them. Protect them by keeping the water clean, keeping the earth clean, keeping the air clean, um, not destroying habitats, um, you know, not over picking or over, over harvesting. Uh, we have to control ourselves <laughs> and be good siblings to them. And in that way, they're always gonna be there for us. And we're always gonna be able to live here um, in our homeland. Um, you're expected to give away and not expect things in return. So, um, yes, we did trading and bartering, but amongst ourselves, um, we would share all of our food, share all of our resources, um, and we would hunt together in massive family groups, um, sometimes more than a thousand Métis together hunting uh, buffalo, and we would share everything, and the women would do all the work together, the men would do the hunting together, and the children were there all the time learning. So uh, that that belonging that we had... Um, it's, it's no wonder that people feel disconnected now and feel lonely now and sad now without that community. We need our community back and we need that belonging, not only to belong to a group of people or a nation, um, but to re really feel our connection and our belonging in the web of life amongst all of our relatives here on the earth. My ancestors roamed 2,600 kilometers every year, back and forth across Canada, across the Métis homeland, the Three Prairie provinces. They were hunting, trapping, fishing, uh, trading, uh, and just making a life for themselves out there. They stood strong for their rights, uh, their rights to hunt and to live the, the way that they wanted to. We have wonderful gifts from them of being strong and resourceful and independent and entrepreneurial. Um, and making something out of raw materials. And those are the gifts that we're really grateful for. And my grandmother's always told me, be proud to be Métis. You're Métis, be proud of that. And. Um, I am. If you're a member of the clan, um, you know, reconnect. That's fine. That's very cool. Um, we're happy to have you back. Welcome home. come and be part of something. Tanshi Nesakasun Kalen Kodiak Ni Oma Lemichif Oti Pemsonan Mercy.